We're now going to determine if a potential zero that we found is an actual zero. And the w there's two ways to do that that we're going to talk about. We can either use the remainder theorem and see if we get a zero out, or we can use synthetic division and see if the last number is a zero. Both have their benefits, but the synthetic division tends to be the best way to go. So let's start with a function. P of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. And so we're going to start by looking at our first term and our last term. The first term is a 1, and the only factorization of 1 is 1. The last term is a 4, which has factorizations of 1, 2, and 4. 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So these are factors. 1, 2, and 4 are factors of 4. 1 is factor of 1. So our potential is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Well, we could say plug in one of these. Let's plug in a positive one. So that's going to give us 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 4, which gives us 1 minus 1 minus 4 plus 4, which when we add that all up together is a 0. So we've confirmed that x equals 1 is a 0. And writing it in factored form gives us x minus 1. So this is a factor of this polynomial. But that's not the only way we could have done this. In fact, the problem with this is that now to go any farther, we have to divide by x minus 1, which we'd want to use synthetic division for. So what we want to do instead is to set this up already with synthetic division in mind. And we'll put our 0 on the outside, and that's what we're dividing by. So now we bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. That gives me a 0. 1 times 0 is 0. That gives me a minus 4 and a 0. So I get a 0 in the last spot. And that means that my remainder, which is what I get if I divide by x minus 1, is x squared minus 4. So my q of x, my quotient, my, my non-remainder piece is x squared minus 4. And then I can break this down, and I could factor it, or I could use synthetic division even more to try and go farther. But that's all that we're going to do with it here. Well, let's look at another example just to demonstrate x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 13x squared plus 12. And what we want to know is, is p of 3, or rather is 3, a 0? And I'll show you where the 3 comes from in just a second. So again, there's a 1 here, so factors of 1 are 1. Factors of 12, though, are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And so our possibles are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. These are all of our possibles, and I'm very specifically just looking at this positive 3. So we can set up our long division. We get 1, minus 1, minus 13, 0, and 12. And when we plug 3 in, which is going to be a 1, 2, 6, that's a minus 7, that's a minus 21. 3 times minus 21 is minus 63. 12 minus 63 is minus 63. 51. And notice that this is not a 0 on the end. And since it's not a 0 on the end, 3 is not a 0, and it never will be, so we don't need to look at the positive 3 anymore. Negative 3 might work, but positive 3 definitely does not. So that's how you can tell. Pick a 0 and do synthetic division on it to determine if the last number is a zero, and if it is, then you keep going from that point, and if it's not, then you just need to check another one.